Hello, my name is Jay. I'm a solution engineer, solution architect for Nginx based in Melbourne, Australia. In today's video, we're gonna look at how your Nginx's configuration context is structured. Essentially dissecting an Nginx conf file and seeing how the construct actually is created. Let's jump into it. What we're gonna cover is the basic commands which you use in your day-to-day -day Nginx use. We'd look at the default locations of your Nginx configuration files, and then we'll work with the Nginx configuration, essentially open it up, see how the construct is created, what the context and the blocks are, and how you can utilize them to achieve your desired outcome. And talking about desired outcomes, I'd just like to highlight the fact that Nginx, with its single lightweight binary, can be configured with all of these functionalities you see on the screen right now. So a single instance of Nginx can be configured as a web server, reverse proxy, load balance, occasion content manager, API gateway, all in one if you wanted to. However, if you're running this in a production environment, of course, you'd probably run a few instances of Nginx acting as a few of those functionalities. In your playground or in your test environment, knock yourself out, you can configure all of these functionalities in a single instance. Nginx can run anywhere on any cloud provider, bare metal on your laptop, and Nginx runs exactly the same, whether you as a developer are running it on your laptop or someone's running it in a cloud provider, A, B, C, or D, it doesn't matter, it runs exactly the same. So <clears throat> let's start by looking at the basic Nginx commands, which you'd use. So the stock standard command you use with Nginx are Nginx-V, which would essentially print the version of Nginx. Nginx-T validates the syntax to ensure that there are no issues with the configuration you're about to push. Nginx dash capital T gives you the configuration currently, which is implemented in your current instance of Nginx. Uh, Nginx dash S reload essentially takes the configuration and pushes it out to the existing instance. So these are the basic commands. Uh, a bit later on, we'll run these commands in my running instance of Nginx and see what sort of returns we get when we run it. Now the location of the configuration file. So, Default location of your nginx.conf is slash etsy slash nginx, nginx.conf. Similarly, uh, the way we try and configure your nginx instance is by putting all the personalized configurations into the conf.d directory. And you, you use the include directive in your, uh, in your main nginx file to go out and access all those configurations. What I mean by that, we'll touch upon that a bit later on. So before, we jump in the demo, let's try and understand from the slides how this construct actually looks like. So let's look at the configuration context. What you see on the screen uh, is a configuration file. It, it consists of combinations of contexts and directives. So contexts include main events, HTTP stream and others. Now, look, this is not, this is not a complete list but these are the primary or the top level contexts, the events HTTP stream. And within each of these contexts, it's got a child context as well. So what we have here is the main context and at the very highest level, uh, you declare the highest level directives like the number of worker processes, the Linux username, or uh, the location of the PID file, or perhaps where you wanna try and push out the, the log file, the error or the access or whatever you wanted to configure and at what level. Events context is used to manage connection processing directives. That is the number of connections assigned to each worker process. HTTP context defines how Nginx processes the HTTP and HTTPS connections. Say for example, uh, we can set a pool of backend service or applications, uh, directives used on HTTP context are inherited by its children context. That is the upstream, the server, and the location contexts. The server context defines a virtual server. So it's also known as virtual host, uh, which processes a given HTTP request. So virtual host is a terminology more familiar with the, uh, the Apache world. The virtual server definition can, can be uh, Domain name, it can be an IP address or it can be a Unix socket. The location context further defines how the virtual server 
processes and HTTP requests based on the specific URI you've defined. So location can point to a path on the file system. It can also be determined by matching the URI request and matching it to a string defined in the context. So for example, you've got slash uh, blogs that can go to a specific endpoint or specific file path on the local machine, or you've got slash application slash something else. It can be routed to a specific path defined within the location block. Similarly, upstream context defines a group of backend applications, uh, application service or web service essentially to use in a load balancing use case. The stream context defines how Nginx handles uh, essentially the layer three and layer four traffic, uh, such as TCP and UDP. Directives, now the directives are very, very essential. So use these directives to go out and achieve a specific functionality within your Nginx configuration. So a directive is a single statement that controls a given Nginx behavior. So a block, uh, on the other hand, what you see over here is, is a block. A block is a grouping of directives encased in curly braces. And uh, what we see on the screen here is a listen directive is telling Nginx to listen on port 80. And the root directive is essentially pointing to a path in the file system. So from slide perspective, this is all I had. So let's jump to my uh, command line terminal. That's where I have an uh, instance of Nginx install. And let's have a look. Let's try and run those commands which we talked about earlier. So we'll, we'll start with typing nginx-v. Uh, this returns us uh, Nginx version. Uh, as expected, uh, I've got Nginx plus install on this box and that's what it's returning. Now let's go ahead and run nginx-t. Ah, and it's giving me error. So look, sometimes when you're running these commands, you may need to run them as sudo. So if I go sudo nginx-t, what I get back is perfect. This is what I expect. It goes out and does a simple syntax text and ensures that the configuration I have are, are as expected and there's no syntax errors in it. Now let's look at our Nginx configuration. So default location for Nginx is Etsy Nginx. So if I go there and do a ls on there, you'd see I've got certain files here and a conf.p directory. But for first, Let's jump in and have a look at my nginx.conf uh, file. So cat nginx.conf, and let me scroll up a little. And as you can see in the main context, I've got the user, which is nginx, the worker process is defined. In the events context, I've got the number of worker connections defined. This is default. Uh, it is completely fine to go with default settings. However, if, you, uh, if you're trying to achieve a specific performance related output, you go out and tweak all of these parameters. What I, ha what I have here in my HTTP context are uh, some directives, which essentially go out and set my log. It sets an access log, keep a live timeout. But the most important uh, uh, directive, which I've got here is the include directive. When I say most important in context of this discussion. So include directive essentially tells the Nginx main file to look into the conf.d directory for uh, wildcard anything.nginx.conf. And all our custom logic, which you're gonna create is gonna be contained within this conf.d directory. So let's get out of here, jump into the conf.d directory and see what we have there. So with this, I'm gonna do cd conf.d and do a ls in the conf.d directory. So I can see I'm in my slash, ng, slash etsy slash nginx slash conf.d directory. And I've got two files there, default and webconf. Now, before I open up those files, let me run one of that command, one of those commands which we, which we talked about earlier. So I'm gonna run nginx dash capital T. And what this command is gonna give me as an output is everything what nginx sees as within its configuration. So let me hit that, hit enter, ah, sorry, nginx dash T. So we run that and it's given me a complete output of what my nginx conf is and what nginx actually reads. So point to note here is that nginx reads the configurations included with the include parameter in a alphabetical order. So if your configuration has, say for example, certain variables or specific configuration, which is dependent on a certain logic, it might only be processed in that alphabetical order. So, uh, your custom logic might not be processed 
if say uh, the, the configuration file you've got starts with a Z and something else starts with an A. So on this output, let's just scroll down and have a look. So I've got my conf file called web.conf, which is read the last. And if I look at another file, which is default.conf, that's read before it. So this goes to show that how Nginx reads all the include, uh, included files. Perfect. So with that, let's jump in my default.conf. I'm going to do cat default.conf. And as you see, uh, this is my server context. And within the server context, I've got a listen directive. Essentially, it's telling my Nginx instance to listen on port 80. The server name directory I've got here is localhost. Uh, you can look for more details on specific directives on nginx.org. That's where a uh, detailed explanation on all on what all these directives do with examples is provided. Also in this instance, what it's doing, it's listening on port 80 and the location is go goes out to this specific route. So that's where it's going to uh, route my specific request. So that's where it's going to try and find an index of index.html or index.htm. So if at this stage I was to do curl localhost uh, slash 80, you don't really need to do that and hit enter. What you get is the default web page for nginx. So this is from the location slash user slash share slash nginx. Now I've also got another file on the system here. So I'm just going to do ls to show you what that other file is. The other file is web.conf. So let's open up the web.conf and see what we have here. So I've created a couple more servers or virtual hosts over here. So it's listening on port 9001. And in this case, the location is for slash, I haven't given it to, uh, to a path on this specific uh, machine. Uh, it's just giving me a simple 200 return and a can message, which I have populated over here. Similarly, I've also created another server on port 9002. So at this stage, if I was to do curl, localhost 9001 and hit enter, I get the message which I've populated over here. So all it says is you have reached application one. Similarly, if I go to 9002, it'll give me this message back. Well, the guys, so look, uh, in terms of looking at the basics of uh, Nginx configuration, deconstruct deconstructing it and understanding the, the various contexts of the config file, uh, this is all. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or write your comments uh, below and always happy to help. With that, thank you all for watching the video. Thanks, bye.